Okay, Roy says that he has seen this kind of question before because in ACGC's tutorial, he has been doing this kind of question where you have gotten a result from the method of difference and you are supposed to work on another summation. And Roy is saying that he knows that this is the replace R by R plus P strategy. But I can understand Roy because you find this strategy very difficult to execute because you don't even know how it works. And I do agree with what Roy is um, saying. It is better whenever it is possible for us to try to dig into the background of how certain strategies are being applied so that with a better understanding of, of um, the inner workings of the strategy, many times we will be able to execute them even better and more accurately during the exam. In fact, in our theory outline, we did give something that is like this. If you can just look at your outline, on the second page of your outline, you will actually see this, number three, replace R by R plus P. So we have an actual example that is here of the application. And if you were to just look at the first page of your outline, number five here, specifically this one. Number five here, right, it is um, the algebraic process of how we can replace R by R plus P. So let me, let me just very quickly go through with you. You know how exactly this works. So we are having a summation from R is equal to M all the way until N of F R. Let me show you why this can become what that is on the right hand side. Um, maybe let, me, let us just simplify this a little bit in terms of our discussion by instead of M, maybe let's take a look at it as if it is 1. Okay. So if I were to expand this summation, we are going to be getting a F1 plus F2 plus all the way until F n. And if I were to just do a bit of algebraic manipulation to 1, just like how you guys have been doing it on, uh, in secondary school for completing square, sometimes you just add a number, you minus off the number, the expression actually remains exactly the same. So we are going to take 1 minus p, for example. If I were to minus p, then we need to plus p so that this is still going to be 1. So I'll do that for here, which is 2 minus p plus p. And all the way until the very last one is n minus p plus p. And if you now treat this as a new r, so r starts from 1 minus p, then it goes to 2 minus p, and it will go all the way until n minus p. Then we can re-express this summation. We can re-express this into the sigma notation, where r starts from 1 minus p, and it is for f of r plus p, because this is now the variable r, r, and all the way until the very last r, is n minus p, the very last r. So now, what we can then do is, what, we, what if we were to move this minus p over to the left hand side? Which means that we will be getting a r plus p is equal to 1, then n minus p, then f r plus p. Let me write down this here. So r equal to 1 all the way until n of f r. So if you can see, what we have just done is to replace all the r by r plus p. And when I replace all the r by r plus p, we will just need to minus p for the number that is on the top. Which is what this is trying to tell us. If I were to start from m all the way until n, if I were to replace all the r by r plus p, we will just need to replace this n by n minus p, and they are supposed to be still exactly the same. And we are going to be applying this here, but with one more condition. And that condition is, 